Hi, this is Derek C. Moss, Professor of English and Interdisciplinary Studies at SUNY Potsdam. Welcome to A Deeper Dive into African American Literature, a daily series of short podcasts produced in conjunction with SUNY Potsdam's Celebration of Black History Month in 2021. Each day this February, we'll be looking at and listening to the work of an African American writer whose name may not be as familiar as Frederick Douglass, Zora Neale Hurston, Langston Hughes, or Toni Morrison, but these writers' contributions help give us a much fuller picture of Black artists' roles in shaping American culture. Episode 13, Willard Motley. When he died at the age of 55, Willard Motley's output consisted of four novels and a long run as a newspaper columnist. Like his uncle, the renowned painter Archibald Motley, he was born and raised in Chicago. Willard Motley, though, moved to Mexico after struggling with the pressure to reproduce the success of his first novel, and the Hollywood film starring Humphrey Bogart that was made out of it. Unlike such contemporaries as Richard Wright and James Baldwin, Motley's fiction avoided overt discussion of racial issues. Instead, his work tends to focus on the psychological struggles of individual characters, generally those hemmed in by social expectations dealing with class, religion, and family, like Motley himself felt, in, uh, felt he was. To this day, the historically black Bronzeville neighborhood of Chicago holds a Bud Billiken parade every year in honor of the fictional character that Motley created for his advice column to young readers in the Chicago Defender newspaper. As a side note, Motley actually has a bit of a connection to SUNY Potsdam in the form of the poet Maurice Kenny, who taught here for more than a decade. For a year in the late 1950s, Kenny lived in Motley's house outside Mexico City and served as his personal secretary, carrying a still unpublished manuscript of a novel by Motley back to New York State with him upon his departure. The following excerpt from Motley's debut novel, Knock on Any Door, introduces us to Nick Romano, the novel's complex anti-hero, as a child in a downtrodden Chicago neighborhood filled with Catholic immigrants. The sparrow sits on a telephone pole in the alley in the city. The city is the world in microcosm. The city lies in splendor and squalor. There are many doors to the city. Many things hide behind the many doors. More lives than one are lived in the city. More deaths than one are met within the city's gate. The city doesn't change. The people come and go, the visitors. They see the front yard. But what of the city's backyard and the alley? Who knows the lives and minds of the people who live in the alley? knock on any door down this street, in this alley. Ma and Pa said they were blessed to have such a good son. Pa, standing straight-backed and square-shouldered, his face never losing that severe look, said in his stern voice, Our Nick is a fine boy. Our Nick is going to be a priest. We are going to give our Nick to the church. And though Ma nagged him about brushing his teeth and shining his shoes, he often heard her say to the neighbors or to company, Nick is so kind and gentle, he's like a little saint. Her voice would tremble with pride, and she would go on. One day by Rankin's grocery store, a cat had a little bit of a mouse cornered and was playing with it, just pawing it and slapping it this way and that. A crowd of people were standing around watching. Do you know what Nick did? You couldn't guess. That child walked up, picked up the mouse, and stuck it in his pocket and walked away as fast as he could. If Nick was to die, he'd go straight to heaven. It was Ma's favorite story. Nick would hang his head self-consciously when he heard it but he still thought about that mouse and felt sorry for it every day. For more information about Motley, follow the link at the top of this page to a remembrance that was published in his hometown newspaper, the Chicago Tribune. Check back tomorrow at the link at the bottom of the screen for another episode of A Deeper Dive into African American Literature. While you're there, you'll be able to find links to all of the previous episodes in the series, as well as links to booksellers from whom you can purchase these authors' works. And please, if you've enjoyed this series so far, help us spread the word. Thanks and gratitude go out to Clifton Harkham, Jason Hunter, and Alex Jacobs Wilkie at SUNY Potsdam, as well as to David Summerstein and Bonnie North at North Country Public Radio.